Sunny Radio, where it's always in the 80s. Thank you so much for listening to Partners in Education, brought to you by Keystone Treatment Center and NAMI of South Dakota and the Bakery of Sioux Falls. Today's topic uh, for this week, I should say, is a violent world, the intersection of intimate partner violence, addictions, and suicide. And we're going to start things off right now with Eric Miller. How are you, sir? Well, good, John. How are you, sir? Fantastic. Thank you for joining me here. Uh, We've got uh, a a, a very interesting topic this week. It's a little different than what we've talked about in the past. I'm excited to talk about this because I know that there are people who are affected by this, and it's going to be uh, very helpful to a lot of people. Yeah. And again, it's not a comfortable subject. Um, I think that's why for many years, um, you know, the tendency is is this is kind of one of them dirty, dark secrets. You just kind of push over in the corner. And, um, yeah, to me, again, with the partners and our mission um, is to get good information out there. And uh, I'm looking forward to the presentation. And uh, domestic violence is something that... um, I guess it's been around since probably, uh, I don't know, did Adam and Eve have an issue? Maybe they did. But, I don't uh, know. I, I know you go back as far as like Cain and Abel for sure. Yeah, it sure did. And so it's not like it's a new subject, but uh, again, to, to draw the parallels between what we see in terms of our trying to help people with addictions and um, we just had a meeting today, you know, about the, the myriad of issues, you know, mental health related um, and alcoholism out in the reservations, for example. But just the, the amount of violence that goes on, the, the fallout on that, especially on unintended uh, victims like kids and that, uh, it's just too important not to discuss it. And the, again, the topic for Partners in Education tomorrow at the bakery, A Violent World, the Intersection of Intimate Partner Violence, Addictions, and Suicide. Uh, the event is coming up tomorrow at 1130, and it goes till 1 o'clock, and there will be pie, of course, at Always. pie at the bakery. Always good pie, right? Yeah. Well, Matt's in charge of pie this, this month, so... I'll assume. I mean, <laughs> with me, I know it's great pie. <laughs> He's always good at good pie as well. Coming up here at the end, we're going to talk about some really positive things as well. But let's talk right now about Keystone and, and wh- what good things you guys have going on. Well, it's uh, it's our busiest time, at least from our point of view, because we're kind of wrapping up um, 2016 and we're looking forward to to next year. And so we've been working extremely hard the last month on you know trying to move the needle uh, in terms of the services and and the programs that uh, we currently offer and um, I just left a meeting here for our we're finalizing our partners in education to 2017 schedule um, and we just I'm really excited. I think by next month I'll be able to announce um, some of what we have upcoming next uh, next year. But we discussed the issue of opioids and a lot of the the traction that we're getting nationally and locally with that issue, the increases that we're seeing with, you know, just prescription medications and a lot of the pain management and the fallout of that. Um, and we're going to focus heavily on that, I think, next year, as well as um, we're going to, I think, shine a, a little brighter light on some of the issues on our state reservations and are um, you know on native land, and we're going to touch on some topics there. I think that honestly, or uh, it sh- it should be at the top of our agenda as a state, and I think as a country. Um, and then we're also going to focus in on kind of the traditional. Um, I guess subjects that are just near and dear around addiction, and that's the family and the adolescence, and what we can try to do to 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 impact that as as best we can. But uh, yeah, it's just a real busy time of year right now, kind of getting ready uh, for 2017. Very nice. Well, thank you for coming in to chat with us. We're going to reach out to Matt Walls and talk to him a little bit. And then uh, can you stick around and we chat here at the end and kind of wrap up? Because I, I know you want to talk about the Cubs. Well, <laughs> yeah, you can. how can you not talk about the Cubbies? So, yeah, I'll stick around, John. All right. So we're going to reach out to Matt Walls. Also coming up in just a little bit, we're going to be making a call to the Compass Center in Sioux Falls. And we've got a couple of guests from the Compass Center that will be our speakers tomorrow, Andrew Voss 
and Michelle Trent. So we'll be reaching out to chat with them in just a little bit as well. Right here on Partners in Education, thank you for listening to Sunny Radio. Keystone Treatment Center would like to help you kick your addiction. Whether you struggle with drugs, alcohol, or some other addiction, Keystone may be able to help you find freedom. Call our toll-free number to learn more at 1-844-204-1055. Thousands of success stories from clients all over the country. Be the next success story. Get the help you need from Keystone Treatment Center. Chances are your addiction will not go away on its own. Get the pain to stop and let freedom begin. It starts with a call, 1-844-204-1055. And thank you again for listening to Partners in Education. And now on the line, we have Michelle and Andrew from the Compass Center. How are you folks doing today? Doing real well. Good. Well, we're glad to have you on the program. Thank you so much for joining us, and thank you for being a part of this month's Partners in Education. Let's talk a little bit. Uh, first, we'll start with, with Andrew. How's that sound? Andrew, what is it that you, that you do there at the Compass Center? What is your position there? I'm uh, the intervention coordinator for the Family Violence Project, which was a program that uh, helps people uh, who are perpetrators of domestic abuse. Very nice. And then, Michelle, what is your position there at the Compass Center? I'm a counselor here at the Compass Center um, and do uh, primarily um, individual counseling with adult uh, females and males who have been victims of domestic violence and sexual violence. Well, thank you to both of you for what you do. I know uh, having people in my life that have been touched by this, I can absolutely tell you uh, what you do is not only something that is uh, absolutely appreciated, but it's also something that's absolutely necessary. So thank you for doing what you do, guys. Thank you. Let's talk about the program that's coming up tomorrow for Partners in Education. Uh, who's going to be the one doing the, the bulk of that presentation? Is that Michelle or is that Andrew or is it kind of a tag team, both of you doing it? Yeah, both of us will be doing it. Very nice. So let's start with Andrew, since you spoke first. See, you're the winner. <laughs> uh, what What is it that you're going to be speaking about at the event tomorrow? I will be describing the, uh, the program that I uh, coordinate, and we'll be talking about the kind of treatment and, uh, that we provide, and also uh, talk some about, uh, from the men's perspective, uh, what they're uh, dealing with in their life. Very nice. And then, Michelle, how about you for tomorrow's program? What what portion of the program will you be speaking about? Yeah, I'll be talking directly about um, the experiences of victims with interpersonal violence um, and intimate partner violence, and then also talking about um, substance use and suicide in um, the world of victims and how that plays out for victims. Very nice. And and there are going to be some people that hear this on the radio or in the podcast that won't be able to make it to the program tomorrow. Tomorrow's Partner in Education event is called A Violent World, the Intersection of Intimate Partner Violence, Addictions, and Suicide. And again, our guests right now are Andrew Voss and Michelle Trent, uh, both with the Compass Center. And Michelle, let's let's kind of dive in a little more about uh, the topic that you're going to be speaking about. For people who cannot make it to the program tomorrow, kind of give us a little encapsulation of some of the information that, that they should know about. You know, I think the important thing to know about um, victims who experience intimate partner relationship is the impact that the, the control has on them um, in their life. And so if we're talking about intimate partner violence and really being about psychological and physical and sexual control over a person, then it becomes very challenging for a person to remove themselves from that and then to deal with um, that. And so there's often um, a large correlation between um, other mental health problems or other substance use problems or those kinds of things because of uh, the sheer nature of the controlling partner and how that impacts them as people. And there are some people that are in these situations that think that they're all on their own. And, and part of part of what happens is that that person that's that's doing this is telling you that you're all on your own and there's nobody out there that can help you. But that's not the case. There are a lot of people out there that can help, aren't there? Absolutely. There's a lot of community partners that we work with here at the Compass Center or at Children's Inn or a variety of places in the community that are able to help a person if they are needing help get out. Um, but I think part of the, the psychological battle is dealing with 
being told that there's no one that will help you and nobody cares about you and um, trying to challenge that by finding people to help you and care about you is a difficult task. Well, and now let's kind of turn our attention to Andrew. Uh, Andrew, the, the portion of the program that you're going to be talking about tomorrow is similar but different, but let's kind of dive in and give people an encapsulation, if we will, of, uh, of what they're going to learn. Because like I said, not everybody's going to be able to make it to the program. So the people that are listening, let's kind of give them a, at least a, a brief overview of what they would be learning and, and get a little takeaway from the program today. As Michelle made reference to control, you know, I think a lot of people in the world think about domestic abuse or violence or aggression towards a partner as an anger problem. And so I think a, a lot of attention gets focused on on anger and controlling anger and that kind of thing. But part of what we try to address is the fact that most abuse uh, stems from the need to uh, exert control or maintain control over a partner. And uh, there's all sorts of tactics that are used to, to do that. And um, so we try to address uh, domestic abuse uh, more focused on that with the uh, intention to help people become more uh, fair and respectful in their interactions with partners uh, towards the uh, development of a partnership. And it, it is extremely important, you know, one, if maybe you have somebody in your life that you think could be experiencing this, uh, there are probably some signs that we could all be looking for, aren't there? Yes, there is. And w- what should we be looking for as far as something that maybe uh, should be a red flag, that should be something that, hey, you know what, M- maybe I need to have a little conversation to, to see if this is something, to, to assure them that, hey, there is somebody for you. I'm here for you. Yeah, I think... Um, you know, there's all sorts of, um, uh, I, I think, common controlling behaviors that that we might see in somebody, uh, and it's real easy to uh, to de- either deny or or think that uh, this kind of control would not become something serious, and so uh, it's sometimes hard to de- to discern with with friends or people in our office or that kind of thing, uh, that that kind of stuff can be going on. You know, a lot of, uh, a lot of people that we see here are really nice guys. Uh, they present real well. They can be very helpful. They can be uh, very friendly. Uh, there are people that we rub shoulders on the, on the street uh, all the time. Uh, but underneath, there's... Um, uh, if there's a fear of losing control, a fear of uh, things becoming out of control, that's when domestic abuse, um, uh, that's where it begins, and that's how it uh, gets into the, the relationship. And, you know, one of the common things that we hear about in, in, a, in a relationship like this is, you know, where the, the victim is the female and, and the person that's doing the harm is the male, but it's not always like that, is it? No, it's not. We actually do have... Uh, in our program, we have a group where we are working with women, and so uh, certainly it's it's not a, a an either or. Well, Andrew, thank you for doing what you're doing, and Michelle, thank you as well for what for what you two uh, provide. Because you know, when there's when there are issues like this, uh, it, it would be easy for people to look the other way and act like it's not happening, but that's not going to fix anything. So what you guys are doing is taking actions to fix things and and help people. And, and thank you for doing that. You're welcome. Thank you. Again, Partners in Education tomorrow at 1130, and it's at the bakery in downtown Sioux Falls, and we hope that you'll get a chance to join us. Like I said, for those of you that did not get a chance to come to these in the past and, and won't get a chance to come to this one tomorrow, that's that's why we have this little program ahead of time to kind of give you at least a little taste of what's going to happen. If you can't make it to the event, you can live stream the event at thebakerysf.com slash live and we've got links to that on our facebook page as well coming up we're going to wrap things up with eric from keystone thank you for listening to another edition of partners in education on sunny radio keystone treatment center would like to help you kick your addiction whether you struggle with drugs alcohol or some other addiction keystone may be able to help you find freedom call our toll-free number to learn more at 1-844-204-1055 thousands of success stories from clients all over the country be the next success story Get the help you need from Keystone Treatment Center. Chances are your addiction will not go away on its own. Get the pain to stop and let freedom begin. It starts with a call, 1-844-204-1055. 
And we're back with Partners in Education on Sunny Radio. Joining us by telephone right now, Matt Walls from Keystone. How you doing, Matt? I'm doing great, John. How are you? Very good. We actually just finished talking with Eric uh, a moment ago about all kinds of fun stuff. And coming up in a moment, we're going to be talking to the folks from the Compass Center. But it's been about a month since you and I have had a chance to talk, so I wanted to kind of catch up a little bit and see what kind of things you're working on right now at Keystone Treatment Center. Well, one of the things I'm always working on is our Partners in Education series and trying to find great uh, folks to present to our community with great content that's kind of leading edge and can give people some good information and CEUs and have fun at the same time. Mm. So Eric and I and some others uh, sat down from NAMI today and we were talking about the future of Partners in Education and we're planning a tentative, very exciting series in 2017. I've really enjoyed the programs in 2016, and I know that they just have been getting better and better. I can only imagine how awesome they'll be in 2017. And uh, it's a great opportunity to learn and to fellowship, and I think that the programs have been phenomenal. So you guys have done a great job. I love them. Me too. Me too. There's some really good uh, presenters that we've come across with some topics that I really think people will enjoy. Again, our guest right now is Matt Walls from Keystone, but in addition to what you do with Keystone, you're involved in other things in the community as well. Yes, I, I help out with the Jason Foundation. I, I represent the Jason Foundation in South Dakota uh, through our local affiliate office, and that's an organization that's dedicated to preventing teen suicide. We got a bill passed last year, and we just provide resources to teachers and communities and parents uh, they can help give them warning signs and, and things to look for to help combat what we call the silent epidemic of teen suicide. When you think about just that one thing alone, 2016 was a very productive year. Now, it passed in South Dakota. Matt, was it a unanimous vote? Pretty much. It passed the uh, the House and Senate Education Committee unanimously. It passed in the Senate unanimously when it came to the House. There were a few that voted uh, against it for various reasons, but we, we did pass it. I think 57 to 11. So most of our legislators, uh, the vast majority, thought it was a really great idea and it had the support of the Attorney General and the Department of Education. So we we felt like it was a really great uh, bill that encompassed and met everybody's needs. And so we just couldn't be more thrilled to to really start the process or, or reinvigorate new life and new momentum into helping to prevent teen suicide. We still have a lot of work to go. Uh, a lot, of, you know, we, we've got a lot of work to do. And uh, I'm really grateful for the partnership that we found with lots of organizations in South Dakota. As we turn our attention to partners in education for this month, the topic is a violent world, the intersection of intimate partner violence, addictions, and suicide, and a very heavy subject. We're going to be visiting in just a bit with Andrew Voss and Michelle Trent from the Compass Center, but do you have something to add on this topic as well, Matt? You know, I just want to say, John, that suicide is a central theme, and there's a lot of things that can lead a person to consider suicide. And domestic violence, addiction, mental health, you, there's a lot of things that are components of suicide. So we want to look at many of these components and educate ourselves and educate our community. And we also do a live webcast of this so folks can log in from all around the country, even throughout the world if they want to, to learn more. And that's I'm, I'm just really grateful to be a part of this and to bring good ideas and smart people together so that we can learn from each other. Again, Partners in Education live event is tomorrow. It's at the bakery from 11.30 a.m. until 1 p.m. And the bakery is located in downtown Sioux Falls at 910 North Main Avenue. Now, if you can't be there live uh, in person, you can certainly stream it live at thebakerysf.com slash live. And we've got a link to that on our Facebook page as well for Sunny Radio. Matt, what kind of pie are we going to have tomorrow? Well, you know, I don't know yet. I think it's probably going to be apple pie, maybe key lime if they have it. But yeah, I love I love pie and sandwiches and 
Whenever you bring food and pie together and people, it's magic happens. You're right. That is magic. And if you can't join us tomorrow to have the delicious pie in person, you can magically connect online and you can get the link at facebook.com slash sunny radio. We've made it really easy. Matt, thank you again for joining us, sir. Thank you, John. Up next, we're going to make another phone call. Now that we got our phone all warmed up, we're going to be reaching out to Andrew Voss and Michelle Trent from the Compass Center in Sioux Falls. They're going to be our presenters tomorrow at Pi. Hi at the bakery. And again, it is happening tomorrow from 1130 until 1 p.m. 1130 a.m. till 1 p.m. at the bakery, downtown Sioux Falls at 910 North Main. And like we've been saying, you can also live stream it and all the details on our Facebook page. Stick around. Andrew and Michelle coming up next on Sunny Radio. Keystone Treatment Center would like to help you kick your addiction. Whether you struggle with drugs, alcohol, or some other addiction, Keystone may be able to help you find freedom. Call our toll-free number to learn more at 1-844-204-1055. Thousands of success stories from clients all over the country. Be the next success story. Get the help you need from Keystone Treatment Center. Chances are your addiction will not go away on its own. Get the pain to stop and let freedom begin. It starts with a call, 1-844-204-1055. And we are back with Partners in Education, Eric Miller, back in the studio from Keystone Treatment Center. Now, we've got some Keystone things we want to talk about, and then we're going to wrap up with some positive, happy, cheerful things. Because, you know, sometimes when we talk here on Partners in Education, it can be kind of a downer, can it? Well, yeah. I mean, it's not like, you know, all unicorns and rainbows here, John. (laughs) No, it's not. But we're going to get to some happy stuff. But first, let's kind of talk about some of the things that are going on at Keystone here. Well, um Keystone, you know, part of what we've really struggled with is kind of a a knowledge, an understanding, and research kind of supports this, John, is that a lot of the critical stages of recovery and the support that's needed at those times happen after they're discharged from our facility. And, you know, we do continuing care and we reach out as best we can uh, to engage folks, but we're really taking a long, hard look at what we can do to extend our support post-discharge. Pretty excited. I think we'll be able to come back here uh, hopefully within, you know, next month or two and uh, really excited about, you know, I guess some of the developments of what we're going to do to utilize technology, our relationship with Clint Brown and those folks down at the bakery that know this technology yeah. of how we can manage in um, a support mechanism post-discharge that will really, I think, make a difference on the successful outcomes of the folks that utilize our service. So I'm excited about that. I mean, other than that, I mean, it's just the obvious things, the Cubs. I mean, it's hard (laughs) not to come back to the Cubs. I don't know if you knew the Cubs are in the World Series. Now, how long has it been since they've been in the World Series? It's been a little while, hasn't it? Well, I'm not a spring chicken, but it's (laughs) the first time in my lifetime. There you go. Uh, So, yeah. Here's the thing that's neat. I don't know if you remember the movie Back to the Future 2 back in 1988 or 89 that came out. In 2015, they were to win the World Series according to that. They were off by one year because they could win, right? Not could win. They're going to? We're going to win. Okay. I mean, Cleveland, they they had their championship, right? Didn't they just get, you know, a basketball one. They're, they're, Cleveland's okay. They're going to be I mean, fine. they got the Browns. Yeah. They're, but that's nothing like, you know, the Cubs are, this is it. This is God's team. This is the one. And here's the thing that's interesting. I just read a story a week ago, not even kidding you, read a story that Nike has the auto lace shoes that they had in Back to the Future. So here's the thing. Back to the Future 2 was right. They were just off by one year. Yeah. And, you know, if everything lined up, the Vikings. Yeah would be in the Super Bowl and maybe actually win it. There you go. <laughs> I mean, if you could have those things happen, I don't care what else happens. But didn't so. you just say a little bit ago it's not all sunshine and unicorns here? <laughs> yeah, well, sometimes you can't have both, but go Cubs. Uh, the other thing, I guess, is, you know, I don't know what you're doing this Friday night, but, you know, it's Halloween coming up. Yeah, Monday is Halloween, but there are a lot well, of Halloween no, parties. Yeah, we do that on, yeah, you don't do Halloween on Monday. That's when we take the little people out. But uh, at the bakery, they're having their second annual masquerade party. I don't know if you saw some of the press on that. I've seen the photos in the past. I've never been to it. It looks like fun. is, yeah, that's an event. Now, again, uh, we'll have to see how we can make that work. But, I mean, literally, I've never seen, um, I guess, costumes and 
um, the way they put that on. They Attention don't to, to detail. Party. They throw a party oh, yeah. uh, at the bakery, so that's Friday night. Um, and again, I'm just I'm looking forward um, to our presentation um, tomorrow. And uh, moving forward, uh, again, just continuing our relationship with Sonny and stuff. So I've had a good time in here with Well, we've, uh, we've enjoyed having you guys. Now, this started in January, and uh, we've had been, one. It's been a long time. It, it has, and it, it seems. I think, you've, I think you've grayed. I have, I have. <laughs> when my hair grows out, you can tell. It's on the sides. So, yeah, I definitely have. I blame you, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> well, I blame Matt. And, and oh, honestly, yeah. if he's, is he coming back? No, he's done now. We're done with Matt, but we'll yeah. talk to him again That's next good. month. Well, that, he has a whole month to forget that I just said bad things about him. So, <laughs> Well, again, the event is coming up tomorrow. It is at the bakery, downtown Sioux Falls. If you have not yet had a chance to get in for any of the other Partners in Education events, maybe you could make this your first. And if you can't make it there, you can also go uh, by checking it out online. Uh, there's a live stream of the event at thebakerysf.com slash live. And I've got a link to that on our Facebook page as well. Again, the topic this month, a violent world, the intersection of intimate partner violence, addictions, and suicide. And those three things do kind of go hand in hand, don't they? They sure do. And yeah. I wish they didn't. Um, but the reality of it is we see it every day. And, um, you know, we're just trying to be a part of a solution here, uh, you know, with Keystone and with NAMI and the bakery and just, you know, get the folks that are out here doing the work day in, day out. Um and get their message out of how we can be a part of that solution. So. And if, if we could see a little less of that every day, that would be a good thing. It would be a really good thing. A big thank you to, again to our friends that are going to be helping with the presentation tomorrow from, uh, from I was going to say Keystone, but that's you guys. It's the Compass Center. <laughs> the yeah. Compass Center. Uh, I lost my mind for a second there. At least I could admit that. Also... F- our friends at Keystone are involved as well, but thank you to the folks at the Compass Center. And it was really nice to visit with Andrew and Michelle just a little bit ago. Thank you again for joining us, Eric. Thanks for hanging out with me, sir. You have a great rest of your day, John. And again, uh, tomorrow is the big event at the bakery. It's at 1130, goes till 1 o'clock. And it is, uh, once again, Partners in Education. All of the details at Facebook.com slash Sunny Radio.